String Calculator Carta Exercise 1. Create a simple string calculator with a method that returns an int, is called add, and takes a string called numbers as input. The method can take 0, 1, or 2 numbers and will return the sum. For an empty string, it will return 0. Here's a Visual Studio solution with an empty library project for the unit tests. Right now, no references have been added to this project. The first thing you need to do when doing test-driven development with AutoFixture is to add a reference to it. This is most easily done with NuGet. In this case, I want to use AutoFixture together with the XUnit.NET unit testing framework, and I also want to use the glue library that adds some AutoFixture love to XUnit.NET, so I install the NuGet package AutoFixture.XUnit. As I'm recording this, AutoFixture 3 is in preview, so I use a private source for the release candidate NuGet packages. By the time you are watching this, AutoFixture 3 is most likely going to be publicly available. Often when doing test-driven development, a dynamic mock library can be handy, so I also add the auto-mocking glue library for AutoFixture and mock with a Q, just in case. However, if I may be allowed to be a bit precognizant, I'm not really going to need it for this kata. Now that I have all necessary references, I can add a set of conventions for this unit test project. I'll call it calculator test conventions attribute, and it must derive from the autodata attribute from the autofixture.xunit NuGet package. For starters, I simply configure it to use a new fixture instance, customized with the automock customization. Not only will these conventions be able to create instances of concrete types, but it will use mock with a Q to create instances of interfaces, if that ever becomes necessary. Now I can create a class to hold the unit tests. I'll call it calculator tests. I have a little code snippet called auto theory to help me fill out a test method. This one should use the calculator test conventions and the name will be at empty returns correct result. For this test case, I only need an instance of the system under test, the SOT. So I'll ask the conventions to provide an instance for me. This is quite similar to the constructor injection pattern. The test method declaratively states that it needs an instance of the calculator class, and it's up to a third party to supply that instance. When using the autofixture.xunit glue library, that third party is autofixture. For the first test case, the string of numbers should be the empty string. The return type should be an int. The actual value is equal to the return value from invoking the add method on the SOT. Finally, I assert that 0 is equal to the actual value. This doesn't compile because there's no calculator class, so I'll add one in a new library project called string calculator. I add the calculator class to the new library and add the add method to the new class. The test now compiles, but fails before the assertion. In order to see the test properly fail, I return minus 1 from the add method. Now the test fails in the expected manner and I can now change the implementation to return 0. The test now passes. The next test case is add single number returns correct result. It requires an instance of the calculator class as the SOT and an integer which will be the expected value. It's worth noting that I don't know exactly what the expected value will be, so that forces me to express both test and implementation based upon that unknown. This tends to lead to terse tests, and I don't need to do several iterations in order to triangulate the correct implementation. The numbers string is simply going to be the expected value, whatever it is, converted to a string. The actual value is still equal to the return value from invoking such.add. Finally, I assert that the expected value is equal to the actual value. The test fails as expected, which prompts me to implement the method by attempting to pass the input. Both tests now pass. The next test case is add two numbers returns correct result. It requires the SOT and two integers x and y. The numbers input is those two integers joined with a comma, and the actual value is the result of invoking the add method. Finally, I assert that the expected value, which is the sum of x and y, is equal to the actual value. The test fails as expected, so I go to the add method to correct the implementation. Based on the current test cases, I can pass all tests with a link query, 
So I'll return numbers split over the comma delimiter with each string passed into an integer and finally the sum returned. All tests now pass.